We're going to skip the scripture tonight. We're going to go straight on in this word tonight. And I'm going to leave y'all with a word tonight. And it's really going to touch home, with, uh, touch base with a lot of us tonight. And it's going to make us understand the, what we can do to better our lives and to be better people for Jesus Christ tonight. You know the devil's got a plan for us tonight. And his plan is to kill, to steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I got a... I, uh, I came to give you life and give it to you more abundant. See, Jesus has come to give us an abundant life tonight. There's a lot of us in here that, that, that kind of come up on the wrong side of the tracks. And I would dare to say that everybody in here didn't come up on the wrong side of the tracks before they met the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. But see, he came to give us an abundant life tonight. But see, folks, this is something we're, we're going to have to do. We're going to have to personally take it upon ourselves to start working on our inner man tonight. Learning the importance uh, uh, of the inner man was probably the most major thing I've ever learned in the Word of God. Learning the importance of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Learning the importance of uh, knowing Jesus personally. The learning the importance of spending time with God one-on-one. -on -one. See, when we learn to study and to spend time with God uh, and examine our inner man, this will totally change your life, folks. And see, folks, until we get serious with who God is tonight, see, it's never going to change our life, folks. We're going we're gonna to remain the same old person that we've always been, but I'm here to tell you tonight that Jesus can change your life. We can he change your life when you start concentrating on your inner man and you start and you start putting emphasis on your inner man. See, it's real easy to dress up to can come to church and it's real easy to show, uh, play the part of a Christian and it's real easy to come in here and say hallelujah praise the Lord. But what about when you're pri when you're in your private time? What about when you're laying there in your bed at night? And you got all these things going through your mind. And do you sit there and talk to the Lord or do you entertain these different thoughts? See, that's what I'm talking about by building up the inner man tonight. When we start building up our inner man tonight, what we'll start doing when these thoughts start coming through our head is we'll start concentrating on the Lord. We'll start meditating on the Lord. And even though these thoughts are still coming, we put God above these thoughts that's coming through our head. And before long, these thoughts dissipate. Before long, these, these thoughts don't hold no weight in our life. And see, where the world is messed up today is they have... They have uh, uh, they have accepted the world's opinion as a high thought. In other words, they're saying, well, if the Lord, oh, if the Lord, if the world says it's okay, then it must be okay. If the world says, you know, that, 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 this, that this certain sin right here is okay, in other words, the world has took a, a poll on it, the world has took an opinion vote on it, and the world says it's okay for this sin to be right here to be okay, then the world is accepting this sin as being okay. But if the Word of God don't say that, see, folks, what, the, what you're doing is you're taking the world's opinion over God's opinion, and see, your mind is never going to change until you take uh, the, the Word of God and make it number one in your life. That's the only way you're ever going to be satisfied tonight, folks. Is when you start working on your inner man and start cleaning who you are up on the inside. See, whoever you are on the inside is eventually going to show up on the outside. And see, if we if we get if we would get our inner man lined up with God, it's going to show on the outside. I can hang around with some of y'all, or I can go out and, and, and go places with y'all, and I can see what's really going on on your inner man. Because, see, it shows up on the outside. If I get in your car and it's just messy and there's McDonald things everywhere and there's just, I mean, just the dirty diapers and all that everywhere, listen, that lets me know that, you know, your car's cluttered, but guess what? Your spirit's cluttered too. Your inside's cluttered. And see, people people who live like that, I had a stepson that lived with me for many years, and he was a mess. I mean, his, his room was cluttered. Everything he done was cluttered. And it was because his life was cluttered. He never took no time to work on his inner man. He was always looking at the outside and trying to impress people on the outside. And look, folks, I don't want you to impress me on the outside. I want to see God do miracles in your life. I want to see God get your life straight now. And I want to see God change who you are on the inside for his kingdom. Amen? Amen. See, it's not the outer life that matters. It's what's in, your, it's, it's what's in you that matters. 
Just, just getting to know what's going on in the side of you. See, that's going to be a major breakthrough in every one of our lives when we figure out what's going on on the inside of us and what the word was, all, uh, what the word is all about, and start focusing in on the word on the inside of us. See, when I started paying attention to my inner thoughts, I started paying attention to my attitude and all that. That's when I really started changing in my life. See, you got to take an uh, inventory of your inner life. Do you ever just sit down and take an inventory of your inner life? Do you ever sit around and take, just take an inventory of all this crazy thoughts that's going through your mind? Y'all don't sit there and tell me you don't have crazy thoughts going through your mind because I know each and every person in here has crazy thoughts going through their mind. And sometimes I think about some stuff and I'm like, my God, how in the world did that even come through my mind? I'm supposed to be a pastor and how did I even think about something? How did I even entertain something like that to come through my mind? Listen, the devil is not going to give up on us, folks. He is not going to quit on us. He's going to constantly, he's going to continually batter us and, and, and try to keep us at, at a place where we won't serve God fully. See, what is your thought pattern tonight? Ask yourself, you know, what is your attitude tonight? What are you allowing to go on, on, go on in your inner man tonight? Well, see, that's where the fruit that's coming out of your life is. That's when I see the, the different kind of fruit that comes out of your life. Now, I'm going to be talking about trees and what we got planted down on the inside of us tonight. And there's one tree I want to talk about first before I get into the good and the bad tree. There's another tree that looks good. Y'all know what a prayer, prayer, prayer tree is, right? And it's the most beautiful thing in the springtime. It's letting us know that spring's on the way. And it's a beautiful tree. But guess what? It don't bear no fruit, folks. It's just, it's just there for looks. And see, us as Christians tonight, we don't want to be here just for looks. We don't want to come up in here and just dress up and make everybody think that everything's going on, uh, going, going fine in our life when everything ain't going fine in our life. Listen to me tonight, folks. Go over to Matthew uh, chapter 12 and verse 34 and 35. Amen. We're going to make this live tonight. Amen. 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 Y'all going to have to wake up or something. I'm going to preach y'all happy before we get up out of here, though. I'm going to have y'all skipping out the door when y'all leave. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Chapter 12 and verse 34, it says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things. So what this is telling us right here, our heart is a garden. Our heart, what the kingdom of God is the garden of Eden down on the inside of us. And see, whatever kind of seeds we're sowing into our garden is what kind of fruit is going to be growing out of our life. It's what kind of tree is going to be produced out of our life that's going to grow, that's going to grow the fruit. This right here is teaching us out of the good things in our heart, the good seeds that we plant in our heart, good things are going to come forth out of our heart. But out of the evil seeds that we plant in our heart, evil things are going to come out of our hearts. Listen to me tonight. Folks, words are seeds. Every word you hear, every word you speak, every word you read is a seed. And that seed, what it does, when you when you speak these words, it's, it, and you're planting these seeds in your garden. When you hear these words, you're planting these seeds in your garden. When you when you uh, entertain these words, you're planting these seeds in your garden. And see, folks, and whatever is in your garden is what's going to grow out of your heart, and whatever is in your heart is what's going to come out of you. Whatever is in your heart is what's going to be displayed through you, and whatever is in your heart is what's going to be coming out of your mouth. See, we can know whatever is in a person's heart by what we see see them doing, how we see them acting, how we see them talking. You can sit there and listen to how a person talks tonight, and you can tell exactly what they got down in their heart tonight. See, I hear people all the time, you, you, you see them in church and they talk about God, but you see them out of church and they never talk about God. But I see some people who talk about God all the time. That lets me know that they're taking the time to plant the seed of the Word of God down in their heart. See, folks, a lot of our problems we have in our life are related to what kind of uh, uh, seeds we've been planting in our hearts and what we're allowing to grow on the inside of us. we got to understand inside of our spirit, is, it, so to speak, is an illustration. It's like we got soul down inside of our 
spirit. And every time we read the word of God, we're planting the, the seed of the word of God down in our heart. And that's what kind of fruit is going to come out of our life. So if we plant good things down in our heart, good things are going to come out of our life. But if we plant evil things down in our heart, evil things are going to come out of, our, out of our life. What kind of fruit is coming off your tree tonight? What kind of fruit do you produce tonight? What are you producing out of your life tonight? Is it good? Is it evil? Is it sweet fruit? Is it bitter fruit? What kind of fruit do you have coming out of your life tonight? See, you can tell what you have on the inside of you by how you act and talk and how, by how you live your life uh, around other people. See, I can watch you and I can tell you what you've been planting in your garden. What do, you, what do you take the time to plant in your garden tonight? That's why the Bible tells us it's so important for us to renew our mind in the Word of God. See, let's say someone has a fruit tree. And it, 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 it's in their yard and it produces an abundance of fruit. And there's so, there's so much fruit that that fruit is becoming a nuisance. So in other words, this must be talking about the, 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 the bad fruit. This must be talking about a bad seed that's been planted in somebody's heart. And see, there's so much fruit that's coming off of this tree that this, tr this fruit is becoming a nuisance. This fruit is falling off the tree. Nobody's picking up the fruit. Nobody's eating the fruit. Nobody's taking, uh, 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 consuming the fruit. Why is that? Because it's bad fruit, folks. And now this stuff is starting to stink and rot. Then all this fruit that's falling around you is starting to stink and rot. And before long, see, you've got a mess in your yard. And before long, you're walking through this stuff and you're mashing all this stuff in between your toes and all this. And it's all because nobody wants to consume that bad fruit. And see, as long as we got this bad fruit coming off us tonight, see, it's just going to make a mess and it's going to continue to stink and rot in our life until we, until we decide to, to get rid of the bad fruit in our life. See, we have two choices. We can continue to pick up this bad fruit. Y'all stay with me tonight. This is a good teaching. You can continue to pick up this bad fruit, and you can continue to put this bad fruit to the side. You can continue to put this bad fruit over here, but until you do something about that tree in your life, that bad fruit is going to continue to come. It's going to continue to drop, and nobody's going to, and nobody's going to consume that bad fruit because it's bad fruit. They don't want to, nobody want to deal with your anger. They don't want nobody want to deal with your selfishness. They don't want nobody deal, want to deal with your rude self because it's bad fruit. Nobody does anything about the bad fruit and it just lays around you and it stinks and, it stinks and rot. It's like I said, we can, we can continue to pick up this fruit. We can continue to do something with this fruit, but you can bet, be assured that this fruit is going to come back. Or we can dig up the tree, roots and all, and get rid of it. Right. Hallelujah. Listen to me. See, that's what, you, that's what you do when you die of self. That's what you do when you surrender to the Lord. You dig that bad tree up out of you. So first of all, what we do, we want to examine our inner man, and we want to see what's going on in our inner man. And if what's going on in our inner man is not producing good fruit, we want to make sure that we take the time to surrender to that thing to Jesus Christ, to die of self, and to dig that tree up, roots and all. See, if you don't dig it up by the roots and all, it's going to continue to produce fruit. You can even cut that thing level with the ground. It's going to start growing again and it's going to start producing that bad fruit again. But God wants us to get rid of the bad fruit in our life tonight. See, and when we surrender to Jesus, Jesus will deliver you from the dominion of that bad fruit. He will, dominion, he will deliver you from the dominion of that sin and not temporarily, but permanently, folks. He will get rid of that tree once and for all when we come to Jesus and we bring it to the altar and we admit to Jesus that we got these issues in our life, that we got these character defects in our life, that we got a bad attitude in our life, that we, we the way we treat people ain't right. Listen, that we're rude, that we're angry, that we're selfish all the time. See, if we'll bring all these things to the altar and give them to Jesus and die to die, die of who we are and take on Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and say, Jesus, I want you living in my life. Jesus, I want to start planting your seeds in my life. Next thing you know, you're going to be, you're going to be producing fruit that's good and then this fruit is not going to lay all around you and just thinking rock. Why? Because people are going to come and they're going to pick the fruit before it has time to drop. Why? Because that true fruit is worth eating. That fruit is good fruit. That fruit is juicy fruit. And the next thing you know, they, they, they're just going to keep picking it. And the more they pick, the more it grows. Listen to me. Because see, God's going to multiply His Word. God's going to multiply everything He says in His Word. And the more of His fruit that we bear, the more of His fruit He's going to give us to, 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 to produce for other people. 
But until we decide to dig up the problems in our life, until we decide to dig up that tree that's producing bad fruit in our life, the only thing we're God ever going to do is we're going to walk around and we're going to dress ourselves up like a Christian and we're going to come to church, but we're going to stink and we're going to rot everywhere we go and the fruit that's coming out of our life is not going to draw nobody to Jesus Christ because it's stinking and rotten fruit. It's bad fruit. And before long, but you ain't gonna have nobody around you. But see, unless you dig that tree up, unless you get that thing up out of your spirit, roots and all, it's gonna continue to produce this fruit. So many of the issues we deal with in life, listen to me, even the things that are wrong with us, our personality, maybe we're impatient, maybe we're always worried about this or we're always worried about that. That's me. That's, that's, uh, that's me. See, I need to get that tree out of me right there. I need to get the tree of worry out of me right there. I need to get the tree of care out of me right there. I need to get the tree of anxiety out of me right there. See, and we all got a tree that produces some kind of bad fruit in our life. But see, until we get real with Jesus and get Jesus to go in there and extract that tree roots and all and get that thing up out of our life, it's going to continue to, to produce the bad fruit in our life. But listen, folks, Jesus is saying right here that, that he came to give us life and life more abundantly. And see, if we'll plant the seed of the Word of God down in our spirit tonight, that He can start growing a good tree up out of us. And before we know it, we're going to be producing good fruit out of our life. And see, all these things that are coming off our tree, whether they be good or whether they be bad, we're allowing them to grow in our garden. And see, and the bad fruit is the fruit of the world, and the good fruit is the fruit of the Word, but uh, and the fruit of the Spirit. You say, well, I, I'm trying to change, preacher. You know, I'm trying to uh, live a better life, preacher. But see, but you won't completely let go of it. See, what you need to do is dig, out, dig all that mess up by, by, up by the roots and get rid of it once and for all. In other words, bring it to Jesus and allow Jesus to free you. Allow Jesus to liberate you and allow Jesus to deliver you and dig that tree up and get that thing up out of you and start planting the seed of the Word of God down in your life. See, you need to get rid of that... You need to get, get to the root of the problems in your life. That's the whole Hallelujah. Praise God. We won't get to the root to the problems in our life. We just want to mask it. We just want to put it to the side. We just want to, you know, put on the nice suit so people won't really know all the problems I've got in my life. But listen to me. You, I can hide my problems from you, but I can't hide my problems from Jesus. And until I bring it to Amen. Jesus, until I get open with Jesus, listen to me right here, that bad fruit's going to continue to come out of my life. But when I get rid of that thing, when I take that thing to Jesus and I admit to Jesus I got this situation in my life and I got a problem in my life and I say, Jesus, I need to get this tree roots and all up out of me so it can't produce no more of that fruit in my life. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. See, the way, you, the way you get to the problem, the root of the problem in your life is you change your way of thinking. And you, and you won't, but most of us won't change our way of thinking. Why won't we change our way of thinking? Because, see, the flesh don't want to, want to have nothing to do with, the, the, with any kind of, that cause, anything that causes effort in our life. We're too lazy to study the Word of God. We're too, we're, I ain't gonna say sorry. We're too lazy to, to read the Word of God, and we won't we, we won't put together a, a plan where we can start operating in the, in the Word of God like God wants us to operate in the Word of God. It says, "Out of out of the good things in a man's heart comes forth good things; out of the evil things in a man's heart comes forth evil things." Have you ever went to your refrigerator and opened the door, and you open that? And praise God, you open that door, and you went. Good Lord, what's that smell up in there? You know? And you say to yourself, I wonder what that is. But you just shut the door and go on. <laughs> Listen to me. Instead of finding out what this thinking was, you just leave it like it was. Instead of finding out what the problem was uh, of the smell was, we just continue on and ignore it. And see, and, and you're saying to yourself, I hope next time we go to that refrigerator, it don't stink like that no more. <laughs> But see, until you go into that refrigerator and find out what's stinking and get rid of it, it's going to continue to stink in your life. Listen to me. It's not going to go away until we find out what's stinking and remove what's stinking out of that refrigerator. It's the same thing with these uh, with these bad things in our life or the problems we got in our life. Uh, it's not going to go away until we examine ourselves and remove it from our life. What we do, we come back the next day and, you know, the smell's even stronger. And what we do, we still don't want to clean it out, folks. We just go in there and we'll just move a few things around. And, uh, and we still don't see anything, but we still smell it. 
So we we'll just get some room deodorizer. Start spraying room deodorizer. Listen, and ain't that what we what, what we're doing with our with the sin in our life? Ain't we won't we won't we won't deal with it. We won't deal with the problem in our life. We won't deal with the tree that's causing the bad fruit to come forth in our life. We won't deal with what's causing our life to stink and what's causing us to rot day by day in our life. We just want to mask our problems and we want to move a few things around and we just hope it's going to go away. Well, honey, it's not going to go away until you get on this altar and you ask Jesus Christ to come in your life and you ask Jesus Christ to do something about the problem in your life. Listen to me, folks. You can be set free tonight. You don't have to live in that sin no more. You don't have to live in that debate no more. You don't have to live in that character uh, deficiency anymore. You can be set free tonight, but you've got to come to Jesus tonight. And you know, instead of dealing with our problems, we just love to spray that room deodorizer on our sins. We love to cover up our sins. We love to cover up the problems in our life and act like everything's all right. Well, honey, until you get real with Jesus, it ain't never going to be all right. And you're going to walk around and, like I said, you can fool me, but you ain't fooling Jesus. And you can go home every night and you can cry on your pillow and you can sit in that house and be miserable and you can be thinking about everything that's going on in your life and you can always have something sorry to say to somebody and you can live like that way the rest of your life until you get real with Jesus and die who you really are and tell him to come go to the problem, to the root of the problem in your heart and remove that tree once and for all. But what we do, folks, see, we, 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 won't, we won't deal with the problem and see, the only way, only way we ever going to get rid of the bad fruit in our life is we're going to have to deal with the problem. See, what other words, I'm going to use the refrigerator again, we're going to have to go in that refrigerator and we're going to have to take everything out of that refrigerator, we're going to have to take the vegetable tray out and wash it, we're going to have to take the fruit tray out and wash it, we we're going to have to de defrost that thing and we're going to have to deep clean that thing. Listen to me. Same way with your heart tonight, folks. You're going to have to take that mess up out of your heart. You're going to have to take everything out of your heart and you're going to have to examine yourself and you're going to have to do some deep cleaning in your life and you're going to have to get real with who you are tonight and ask Jesus to get this stuff out of your heart. Because until you ask Jesus to move it, he's still going to reduce that fruit over and over and over and nobody ain't going to consume it. And all the only thing you're going to is you're going to walk around with a bunch of stink and rottenness all around you all the time. And you're never going to be happy and you're never going to live uh, live the Christian life that Jesus died, died for us to live, folks. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, it's the same thing with the bad stuff in our heart. See, we're going to have to go in there and we're going to have to ask Jesus to remove it roots and all. Jesus, get the bad stuff out of my heart. Jesus, get, go to the root of the problem. You know, maybe, maybe, see, but people don't realize it might have been something happened to you when you were two or three years old that caused the root to start growing inside of you. And you've never dealt with it. You've never done anything about it. And now you're producing bad fruit from that root that happened 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. I'm old. I have to say 50. Listen to me. But listen, until I get real with Jesus tonight, and ask Jesus to take that tree out, roots and all. And so I can get rid of the bad fruit that's coming out of my life. It's not going to go away. It's going to continue to put, it's going to continue to put out fruit. You ever seen these fruit trees that produce fruit that nobody wants to eat? That's the bad fruit in our life. You know, the people say, well, them horse apples there. You know, them ain't no good to eat. Well, that's what kind of fruit we got coming out of our life tonight, folks. But see, when we start living for Jesus and, and allow Jesus to start doing the work, a deep cleaning on the inside of us, allow Jesus to go down in our heart and get real with Jesus and just surrender everything we are to Him. See, He can take that, He can get rid of that bad fruit out of our life and He can start producing the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of love, and the uh, fruits of joy, and the fruits of peace, and the fruits of kindness, and the fruits of temperance. And you know what? People are going to start consuming that fruit off your tree. In other words, next thing you you know you're going to have all kind of people that you never thought possible. They're going to be coming to you and they're going to be wanting to know what in the world is going on in your life. I want to know what, what you're doing in your life and the only thing you got to tell them then. See, the reason they want to know what you're doing is because they're getting all this good fruit from your life every time they see you. They ain't getting nothing negative from you. They ain't getting nothing uh, 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 that, that's not positive from you. Everything they're getting from you is good stuff. And see, then, they, then they're, they're going to know what 
what is going on in your life. And see, that's when we can tell them about Jesus. And that's when we can tell them about the goodness of the Lord. And that's when, and that's when we can tell them about how Jesus can do the same thing in their life. But as long as you've got that bad fruit coming out of your life, that they ain't nobody going to be drawn to Jesus through your life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I like that. See, the only way to get the stink out of your life is to let Jesus take everything out of your heart and let him do some deep cleaning in your life. And it's the same way with us, folks. We have to examine ourselves and find out what we really have deep down in, our, in us, what we have allowed to grow on the inside of us, and we've never dealt with it, and it stinks. It stinks. It stinks. You can come to church, and you can spray a little deodorizer on you, and you can get through church. And nobody really don't know what's going on with you. But you go back home and you're miserable. You go back home and you're sad. You go back home and you're, and you're defeated. You're depressed. You're wore out. And we just say, I just preach, I just need a miracle. No, what you, do, what you need to do is get rid of that wrong way of thinking. You need to get rid of that wrong way, that wrong attitude. And you need to deal with, with a tree that's producing the bad fruit in your life. And what we're always saying is, what if this? What if that? I had somebody preach this to me the other day. What if this? When are you going to give God your what ifs? When are you going to keep, when are you going to quit saying what if? And what, hallelujah. And just trust the Lord in your life. Mm. See, folks, we need to get rid of all the what ifs in our life. And we need to quit questioning God. And we need to just believe in Him. We, need, we, we, we say to ourselves, well, what if I lose my job? What if Social Security fails? What if the government goes bankrupt before I turn 62? Well, let me give you a revelation. The government's bankrupt right now. So if you ain't 62, guess what? It's already happened. And if you're over 62, guess what? The government's still bankrupt. Listen to me tonight, folks. And, and, see, and, 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 and see, instead of getting rid of what, all the what ifs, see, we won't trust God like we're supposed to trust God. We say, well, what if my kids get in trouble? Well, what if I get cancer? Well, what if I lose my hair? Well, what if I have heart trouble? Well, what if I get fat and old? Nobody don't want to take care of me. Uh, what, what if this? What if that? What if? What if? What if? When you're thinking like that, you're not trusting God. See, when are you going to give God all your what ifs? Listen, folks, it's time for us to quit saying what if. And we need to say, but God. See, God's got an answer for every problem in our life. The bad fruit that's coming in our life. See, we keep saying, well, what if, what if, because of the, the bad tree that's growing on the inside of us. But God's got an answer for everything that we have in our life tonight, folks. And I know this ain't no jump up and shout, but listen, this is a good teaching message right here. What have you got growing in your heart tonight? What kind of fruit do you produce out of your life tonight? If you're not producing the right kind of fruit, quit picking up the stick and quit picking up the stuff that's falling on the ground. And quit putting it over here because it's going to keep on falling. Dig that thing up by the roots and deal with that problem in your life and take it to Jesus and die to self and surrender to Jesus Christ and let him remove that tree out of your life. And once he removes that tree out of your life, you start planting the seed of the word of God in your life and you let him start growing a tree of life in you. You let him start growing a tree that produces good fruit inside of you. See, See, when are you going to surrender all your what ifs to God? See, if you, if you live your life in the what ifs, you will never get anywhere in your life. It's just like sitting in the car, spinning tires. You just sit there spinning, but you're never going nowhere in your life. But see, but we have to take it to Jesus tonight. And we have to find out what the Word of God says about our life tonight. And we have to change the way we're thinking about it. Not just mask it, but, uh, uh, but remove it so the smell will go away. See, folks, until you go in that refrigerator and clean that refrigerator out, that stink is not going to go away. And until you allow Jesus to go inside your heart and clean out your heart, your problems are not going to go away. They're going to remain there from now on. But listen to me tonight, folks. Hallelujah. Listen. You see, we have to learn to start thinking positively tonight. And we have to learn to walk in faith tonight. And we have to learn not to let our mind think about all the what ifs. 
and all that could go wrong in our life. See, you can think yourself happy tonight or you can think yourself miserable tonight. But I'm telling you right now, it's all up to you. If you don't do nothing at all, you're going to end up on the miserable side. You're going to end up on the unhappy side. And you're going to end up on the destructive side. But see, and all that fruit that's coming out of your life will be fruit worth, not worth having. None whatsoever. See, the more you think, see, the more you think right, the healthier you're going to be. Oh, the more positive you are, I think my battery's just dying. That's all. Battery the more dead. positive you are, the more healthier you're going to be. The more, the, more, the, the, the more good fruit you come out, got coming out of your life, the happier your life is going to be. The, 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 and the more stress that you're going to relieve from your life. See, but you have to get your mind renewed in the Word of God so you will be thinking in the right way. If you're not thinking right, you're going to be depressed, you're going to be unhappy, you're going to be defeated, and you're going, you're going to live in the what-ifs the rest of your life. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of living in the what-ifs. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of producing bad fruit out of my life. I don't know about y'all, I have a choice tonight to, to change what's going on in my life. See, if you don't like the life you're living tonight, you've got a choice to change that life, that life tonight, but the only way the change is ever going to come is going to come through the Word of God. And see, folks, until we get serious about the Word of God, until we get serious about what, what we need God to do in our life, until we get serious about the problems down in our heart, our life is never going to change. But I'm telling you right now, if you will change your thinking about, uh, about the way you, uh, about, about the problems in your heart, if you'll change your thinking to line up with the Word of God, if you'll stop thinking like the world and stop agreeing with the world and allow God to come in and do some deep cleaning in your hearts, allow God to come in there and start cleaning out your, uh, 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 all the problems in your life and get that stink up out of your life. The next thing you know, you're going to live a happy life. And listen, folks, the happier you are, the healthier you are. See, the more positive you are, the more the more, the more you're going to enjoy life. But you can never enjoy life if you just walk around bearing bad fruit all the time. You are never going to enjoy life if you walk around with a negative attitude all the time. You're never going to enjoy life if you just walk around all the time thinking about the negatives. Let me tell you something right now. If you wake up in your bed in the morning and you just sit there and think about everything that's wrong in your life, you're already defeated before you get out of bed. But if you'll just lay there and think about the goodness of the Lord, if you'll lay there and think about how good God's really been to you, if you'll sit there and think about how God saved you, if you'll think about how good your health is, if you'll think about that you've got a roof over your head, if you think about that, uh, the, uh, that you're in a decent financial situation, you might not be rich, but all your needs are met. See, God has done a lot of stuff for us in our life. But if we lay there and think about all the wrong things in our life, listen folks, you're already defeated. Your day's already messed up and you're never going to be able to face the day. You've already ruined your day before you even get out of bed. But if you'll start learn, if you'll learn to start giving God praise and start saying thank you Jesus. I know it don't look favorable today but I just want to say thank you Lord. I know that you know I hurt all over today but hallelujah thank you Lord. I know that you know I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills this week but hallelujah Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I know that, you know, I might have a little sniffle going on, but hallelujah, thank you, Lord. See, you can change everything in your life. You can change everything in your persona. You can change everything in your heart. If you'll just start thinking in line with the Word of God. In Proverbs 23 and 7, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What, 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 what have you got planted in there right now? What is in your heart right now? What have you got bearing fruit in your heart right now? You have to make up your mind this morning. I I'm going to dig that tree up out of my heart. I'm going to dig that problem up out of my heart. And I'm going to let God plant him to see that his word in my heart. I'm going to plant thus saith the Lord down in my heart. And I'm going to start living for God tonight. I'm sick and tired of living, uh, living by the dictates of the world tonight. I'm going to start living by the promises of God tonight. Listen to me. You have to tell yourself that you can do whatever you need to do. No more wrong thinking for me. See, I'm going to think it right. I'm going to think in line with the Word of God. And whatever problem i got in my life, I'm going to allow God to go in there and go in there and search my heart. Search my heart, oh God. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. I know I'm not right. I know i got problems. But Lord, that's why I'm calling on your name tonight. 
God. And see, when you start calling on the name of God, He's going to start He's going to start digging that tree up root by root by root until that tree's completely gone out of your life. And the next thing you'll know, your whole life's changed. Everything in your life has changed. Your thinking's changed. Your attitude's changed. Your character's changed. Your way you treat other people's changed. The way you talk's changed. The way you walk around's changed. Why? Because you made a decision. As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. And you made a decision, I'm going to think in line with the Word of God. And I'm going to think in line with what does say the Lord. And I'm going to quit thinking with the way everything looks. Don't you know the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight? See, we don't walk by our five physical senses, folks. We walk by the faith in the Word of the living God tonight. And listen to me tonight, folks. we got to start walking by faith in God's Word tonight. And we got to start let, stop letting all this other stuff bother us. Because in the final end, what, man, what difference does it make anyway? In the very in what difference does it make anyway if you belong to Jesus Christ what difference does all this stuff in this world make anyway live your life for God tonight and quit trying to please everybody that you come in contact with quit trying to make everything happen for everybody else but just live for God tonight and let him sort your life out tonight as a man thinking in his heart so is he think in line with the word tonight and quit thinking in line with the world tonight and see what God start producing good fruit out of your life tonight what have you got in your heart tonight? That's my question for you tonight. What is in your heart tonight? See, I need to ask myself, what have I got in my heart tonight that I don't want there no more? See, if I get real with God tonight, He can take it out. He can remove it. And then once He removes it, I have the choice to go back and start putting the seeds of the Word of God down in my heart. And then next thing I know, I'm going to start growing His fruit out of me. And next thing I know, even when things ain't going on like they're supposed to. See, I'm still going to have my joy. I'm still going to have my peace. I'm still going to have love, you know, just running all through me. Why? Because now i got the tree of life growing on the inside of my garden. Amen? Amen. 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 Y'all come on. Praise the Lord.